Okay. I'm going to just do a 30 minute sit here. So find yourself a comfortable seat. And we were doing the breath meditation sutra, Anapanasati sutra recently. Did a big deep dive into it. And one thing uh, the Buddha says is, um, before he explains all the techniques of meditation, he says, oh, a monk goes off and finds a tree in the woods and sits beneath it or goes into an empty house. There is a preparation for our meditation that comes from giving ourselves some boundaries. So the boundaries are, they're not, they don't have to be specific, but it's about an idea of creating a space for us to do something different than the regular flow of our life. Sort of imagining that you're more, you're usually in life and you're, you're sort of in a convertible and life is just blowing your hair all over the place. And what we try to do is create a little bit of a windshield. And if we're really strong, we create a roof and everything. And we pull up the top so that we can get a little bit of relief from the buffeting winds so that we can hear ourselves. Well, in this case, not think maybe. So that includes your environment, but also your posture your seat, like whether it's comfortable or not. And we just do the best we can. We may have this physical discomfort. We may have a lot of emotions going on. We may be in a place that's very busy and loud and we can still meditate. But we want to start with an intention of setting up a little bit of boundary. Now, ultimately there is no real boundary between meditation and life. This is an artificial thing we do to learn a skill. But it is very helpful. And then once we've sort of found ourselves within our boundaried place, once we've got ourselves a stable seat that's somewhat comfortable, we feel solid on the ground, we feel upright and awake to a position that's comfortable enough to hold for 30 minutes. Then we sort of stop our interference with our life and we turn on the acceptance energy within our mind, body, and heart. And we just acknowledge where we are now. So after we've set up this meditation practice to start going, what does this body feel like? What is this mind acting like? What are my emotions like? And what is my environment like? And we aren't investigating it with the intention of learning anything or in judging it or remembering anything. We are opening ourselves to accepting the way it is and noticing if there's parts of us that are not happy with how things are or want them to be better. And we just start using our wisdom to work between, to work through that resistance so that we can accept the resistance, but also accept that which we are resisting. And so what are we resisting? Well, on the surface, it's going to be discomfort in the body. It's going to be emotional discomfort. It's going to be 
narratives in the mind that are scary or uncomfortable or that we don't have enough or that we aren't good enough. And over time, you'll get a subtle awareness of there being some struggle in your body. And even if you're not sure what you're resisting, you can just tell, hmm, I'm not in acceptance. If you're suffering in any way, you're not in acceptance. And suffering is such a big word, often we don't realize that we're suffering. If everything doesn't just feel perfectly all right, then you're suffering. Now, we have to be very careful there, because we can be sad and be perfectly all right. We can be in pain and be perfectly all right. So the perfectly all right is this sense of being okay with the way things are. Not needing to interfere. Doesn't mean you won't interfere, but you don't need to. Now, for all of us, it can be useful to get an anchor for our attention and for our acceptance. So we often focus on the breath. And this is where we practice acceptance on something where it becomes clear what is and what isn't the breath is just pressure and heat and flow in the body can you just let this pressure and flow and heat and vibration happen in the body the way it is without controlling it or judging it or interfering with it or even thinking about it just attending to it now today we're going to go further inward but for most people it'd be very helpful to find the belly or your favorite breath meditation location and really drop below the mind story of the breath and feel it as it happens. I want you to start developing a kind of confidence in yourself that even if you're distracted, 
even if your mind is noisy, even if it's hard to focus on the breath, that you can let that distraction and noisiness and difficulty arise and do its thing and then fall away and you will come back to the breath. And the confidence is that if you keep doing that, then eventually, usually within that sit, you will start to find some acceptance, some concentration. This confidence is very important because it actually reside. It is not a mental confidence. It's the confidence that one gets by touching into the truth that one is already in acceptance. That there is a part of you, the true part of you, that is already in acceptance. No matter how much emotion or resistance or mental talk is going on, There's a part of you that's already accepting the way things are. This is your true self. And even if it's very obscured or we're having trouble connecting with it or we don't really believe intellectually in the moment, once we've touched into this already accepting part of us, it gives us a confidence because it's sitting underneath every other idea we have. We just have to remember. So today we're gonna to go inward even further and focus in. This word in is misleading but sometimes gets you in the right direction at first. So we're going to start focusing on ourself. So we were just focusing on the breath, which in our everyday life sort of is part of ourself. But as you meditate on the breath, you realize that you are the observer of the breath. And so that's not you. The breath is there, it stops, it gets bigger, it gets smaller, it keeps changing, but you remain. So we're going to turn from the breath. You can still use the breath as a kind of metronome, anchor for your practice. But we want to start falling into ourself. This is a very subtle practice because what we encounter is the whole elaborate illusion the mind creates around ourself so that it has a nice character to tell a story about. My, I guess I'd call him my root teacher, Nisargadatta Maharaj, would say to focus on the I am. So we're looking for the experience of I am 
I exist. I am, and you can start with a three word one, like I am here or I am now as a kind of beginning. And eventually you drop the here and the now, and eventually you drop the I, and it just becomes being. But whatever you do, whatever words you want to say about yourself right now, I am hungry, I am sad, I am in pain, I am meditating, I am daydreaming, all of those require I am. They require the I to be there doing the thing. So we start to sort of search for that central character. And this is a subtle practice of making an effort and then not making an effort. Sort of allowing yourself to fall into yourself. You're already here. It really shouldn't be a thing you need to search for. And yet we sort of need to search to realize that we don't need to search. So we want to do a little bit and then relax. As we search, we're going to encounter things like our body and our mind and pictures in our mind of ourself, pictures of our face, pictures of our body. And that's good. We can sort of accept those as they are. We don't have to reject them but slowly get in tune with the idea that those are just things that are the objects of I am. I am thinking. I am a person with a face. I am a body. Those are not the I am itself. And so what we slowly realize is that any experience we're having in the sensory realm is not the I am. And so the practice here is actually a kind of practice of letting go of the world. Now, letting go does not mean not accepting. Letting go, in fact, is equivalent to accepting means we no longer need to interfere with, judge, think about, try to fix the world, any part of our sensory world. It no longer needs us to think about it or even to attend to it. And this is why the practice has this quality of going inward. It's like we're going into a dark, darker space a quieter space. And so on our search for I am, we first encounter the body and all our senses. And then we start to encounter the mind and all the emotions. But as we start to let go of those things, we start to follow the trail of silence and stillness of dark. And our habit of attention is towards the noisy and bright and moving. So it will keep turning back towards the world, the sensory world, and that's normal. We let that energy play itself out. It's kind of like a child having a tantrum in Target. Just sort of have to hug it and wait for its energy to die down.
So on the trail of I am, we, we encounter the body, then we encounter the sensory world, then we encounter the mental and emotional world. And we start to follow silence and stillness and dark. And we'll notice maybe that we have become enmeshed with our attention. So when you start to look for the I am, you start to find that it's really close to the, the attender. That is the person, the thing that is attending, the thing that is focusing and then looking at something else and then focusing on something else. As you allow the attender to first follow stillness and silence and shadowy dark, and the, allow the attender to let go of the world, including your inner world, your inner emotional mental world, as you allow the attender to go into the dark, you may also notice you are aware of the attender. You're aware of your attention. And just like it was when I was aware of my breath, that means that I am not identical to my attention. And so there is an I am. I am attending. I am attention. Those are, that's still a little more than the I am. And slowly, just as we let go of the world, we start to let go of attention. And just as we, just as letting go of the world didn't mean stopping the world or rejecting the world, letting go of attention does not mean stopping the movement of attention or rejecting attention. It means we're no longer identified with fixing or controlling our attention. We are falling inward through attention into the deeper self behind attention, the I am. I exist. And I exist does not mean, in experience, it does not mean this body exists. It does not mean this mind exists. It does not mean these emotions exist. It does not mean this attention exists. I exist refers to something else. Now, anything we do to try and get to the I am will, will drive us further away from the I am. So it requires us surrendering to the I am to really experience it. And there's classical techniques to help with this. Like for instance, Maharshi's question, who am I? It's not his question, it's a very ancient question, but classically, classical self-inquiry, who am I, or what am I, or where am I? That's what we're, that's the question that we're asking. 
But we have to realize it's not a thinking question. It's not a question for the mind. It is like baiting a hook and throwing it into the ocean and letting the reel sink to the bottom, letting the, the weight, the bait sink to the bottom of the ocean floor, and then just waiting. So we ask, where am I? And we let the mind spool out with all its answers, but we don't give attention to that. We've let go of that. We are falling back into the truth itself. We want to be shown where we are. We want to be shown what we are. And shown is already too visual. We want to directly experience our being. And this is a direct path meditation, so it often doesn't have the signals of progress that the indirect path has. But first, it may just be confusing and you may just feel lost. And you're always welcome to go back to the breath. But also know that this feeling of being lost is sort of part of this path. Now, there are markers. It's just it requires a much bigger jump to get to these markers. As we turn away from the world, there is a sense of freedom that starts to suffuse your experience. You start to get lighter and more transparent as you slowly let go of identifying with pieces of the world. If you get a little taste of lightness, that's useful because then you can contrast it with the areas that are not light. And those are the areas we're still holding on to. Those are the areas that are still obscuring our I am. It's like quitting a job you don't really like. And you've been wanting to quit for several years. And then suddenly you do it. And you're walking out of the building and there's a lightness because you no longer identify as I am an accountant. You get to drop that accountant and now you're just I am walking out of the building. And so as we slowly drop present moment identification with sensory world, it gets lighter. We are none of the things we think we are. You can quit all those jobs. And anything that we're really identified with is kind of a job. We don't realize it, but we're working it all the time. 
even things like I am good at math, that's a job, or I am sick, that's a job. Or even I'm a generally happy person, that's a job too. I'm a meditator, that's a job. I want, I believe, those are jobs. And we can quit them all. With no idea what job is next. Maybe the idea of retiring for good. And so we just keep turning back to the I am. Whatever you're identifying with, I am X, you go there and then you drop the X and you just find the I am. And for those of you who have already found some residence in the I am, you can start dropping the eye as well. And what is M? M is isness, it is being. The M is only for eyes. Once you drop the eye, you can just be. No, another way of putting that, there is just being. Okay. This practice never needs to stop. But I am going to stop guiding. We can slowly find the inner motivation to open our eyes and join the group and retake in the sensory world. When you really take in the sensory world from within the I am, the sensory world becomes empty and alive, becomes transparent and vibrating and afresh. Because it's no longer calcified with your stories about it. All right, Instagram, thanks for stopping by today. Um, if you enjoyed this meditation, you are welcome to join us on Zoom every Saturday. And we have a nice group. It's been going on for a long time. Um, Flash is a by donation class. Any donation is welcome. No donation is required. Much love.